Who is Chris Farron now? Better than the person I was about four years ago. A bit more, um, I'm happier with him myself. Um, I'm less angry. I don't want to fight. I might have an argument or well, arguments with people. And I feel more balanced now than I am. I was uh, a few years ago. Yeah, just um, I feel um, less stressed and more positive and um, more creative. I want to help people rather than take them to the cleaners. Yeah. And um, which is a good feeling. Really, I don't know because I wasn't in my right mind because I was intoxicated and drug-induced. So I could have been any person, but I was—I um, was still a good person. That I was using, though. Really, I still had, you know, some, well, a few good qualities, really. But I was just—I um, was like um, a whirlwind bulldozer, bulldozing everything in front of me. I didn't care really about anybody apart from myself, as long as I was right and I got what I wanted, then that was good enough. If I didn't, then people would face the consequences, mm, basically. But I was still a half-decent person, really, mm. amongst all the madness. You had to be, that's the, uh, you can't be completely ruthless because you won't be able to survive like that. You have to balance it out. You have to, you know... You knew inside you was a good person. I knew I had it there, yeah, but the drugs were taking it away. And the booze, the lifestyle, it was gone, basically. So five years ago, what was the day in your life like? Hectic. It was manic. I was getting. I was. I would get up. Well, if I went to sleep, that was, um, and then just go out um, to get drugs from morning till night. Basically, it was just a lifestyle. Going out, you know, going out with a group of people um, because I had a bit of savvy. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to program people. Oh so they used to go out and do all the shop listing, design the perfumes, and I used to orchestra, like, have a look out, carry the bags, so I'd get my hands clean, of any, well, sort of semi-clean from any big activity. <laughs> so yeah, just making money really to get drugs. That right. was savvy. Well, I was as savvy as it could get in that s them circumstances. Yeah, it was, it was a habit every day. I didn't even think about it, but now I think about it. Then I think I don't know how I've I done it every day. I got a clue. How much have you spent on drugs and alcohol? Have you ever calculated it? Have you ever calculated it? In four years I spent, well, basically I had, um, I had, um, I had a godmother who was very wealthy and, um, in four years, I, 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 I extorted about, without any exaggeration, um, it's a bit embarrassing really, about 250 grand out of her. In reality, um, in four years, I was spending that money like it was going out of fashion. This is before my big downfall. I was living in a 500 pound rented um, apartment accommodation, what I was paid for, and I was, I was getting wired money through every minute. I was living like a king. I had half the, half the pub section cornered off for me. Um, and I had loads of Klingons and, um, around me. I was spending money, spending money for four years constantly. And then um, she cut me out of her life and then I had nothing. So I was going from smoking cigars to picking up um, butts off the floor. So it was a bit of a come down, but that's the consequences. Did you hit rock the box? Yes, I did. As soon as she cut me off, I was living like a king. I used to wake up with two, three hundred pounds and I was skint in my eyes. That wasn't enough. Nothing was never enough. I needed more and more. Than... I was greedy. I was, I was young, so I didn't understand the concept of all this money. I was just easy come, easy go, spend, come up with stories, blagging her. She used to feel sorry for me. She didn't know half of the stuff what I was doing. 
and she was naive and I used that vulnerability to my advantage to extort money out of her but I got to a point after four or five years where she just couldn't take it no more because I had uh, thousands upon thousands out, out, out yeah. and then it was gone and then I lost, lost everything. <clears throat> In the midst of it, how much were you using a day? Of, of, I, of whatever I didn't think about it. I wasn't thinking about it. I was. I wasn't even calculating anything. I was just using. Um, it probably was a scary amount, but I wasn't. I didn't think. I didn't know about the the elves. I thought I was young. Nothing was going to happen to me because all young people take drugs. So I thought I was young. So I used that so I could take more. Nothing was going to happen to me. So, and I built up a tolerance so strong. It doesn't matter how much I took. It just wasn't. It was. It was mania. That's all I did. Horrific mania, basically, through drugs, basically. Five years from now, I would like to not worry about anything. I would love to, 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 to work in the production or something in production to create programs or things like that. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do every day to help other people and to create things for others, to help others to create something high quality, high quality shows, that's what I'd like to do. In theatre? Yeah, in theatre, um, sketch shows, high quality sketch shows which I want to put together, um, Fallon Funnies. Um, oh wow. Yeah, sketch shows, high quality sketch shows which is modern, up to date and people can relate to and, it's, and no one's done that for a while. So that's what I would like to do basically. When was there a change where you started to feel that there's life at the end of the tunnel, if you like, without the substance? Here? Well, funny enough, um, uh, it, my brother, funny enough, my older brother, which he was in a role model, basically. It's, I, the irony of it is fantastic. Basically, um, me and my brother used to use in Hackney. I used to look after him and look after each other, basically, using drugs, using drugs. And I never thought he was going to stop. He was much worse than me. I'm not being funny. He was. Is he um, big? He's older than me um, by four years. And um, um, I, I, I moved from Hackney, where I'm from, to Ilford, thinking it was going to be better. It was actually worse. Um, and then my brother stops. Quite funny enough, he just stops. He stops. He stops everything. He stops his heroin. He stops crack. He got on some text. And who sorted his life out. I couldn't actually believe that he, he, he stops. And I still was using, and I felt like a bit of a, I thought, hold on a minute, um, I'm getting left behind, he stopped, and I felt embarrassed. And I didn't think he would stop. I thought I would stop, if, you know, and turn my life around. But he actually done it, which was out of the blue. And I couldn't believe it. So then I came up to WDP, and um, I, I, went, I, I went into rehab. I went to um, uh, Broadway Lodge in Western Super Nightmare. I <laughs> um, yeah, I was there seven weeks. <laughs> I, I got in there and I didn't like nobody in there. I didn't. Why? I didn't like none of the counsellors, none of the people, nothing. I didn't have no preparation to go in there. Not like they do now with preparation classes, blah, blah, blah. I went in there like a raving nutcase. And um, I didn't like no one in there. Two people I built up a sort of relationship in there with. But you know, I just turned everyone, I, I didn't want to associate with none of them. And um, I was very stuck up, like, and I shouldn't have been like that. And I, I was walking around, and they were all sitting over there, and I used to sit all the way over there. And it was just, and then I got, I got kicked out after seven weeks. Basically, I, I left rehab, I come back to Wilford, and um, I started air football. You know air football oh, yeah. in Redbridge Colin, who's yeah. my friend in Dan. Yeah. I've known him for, for a long while, and uh, went to air football. There was only five people at his sessions, and then I had my girlfriend there, she got pregnant, and then um, I still was using it a little bit. 
And once I see the scan, then I start with drugs. Because I was snorting coke, I found out on New Year's Eve, I don't know if it was Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, I can't quite remember. But I remember I was snorting cocaine with my friend, and um, I found out the news. I was celebrating even more of celebrating, you know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't realise the reality of it at the time. I didn't, you know, the responsibility and the seriousness of it. And then it dawned on me, I was still living in a little bed sit in Ilford. I didn't even have a bed or nothing, I was sleeping on a mattress on the floor. It was a complete, you know, nightmare. And, um, you know, when I see the second scan, I thought, well, I have to try and sort my life out. I thought I'd either choose my child or I'd choose drugs. So I wasn't going to choose drugs over my first child because I don't, I don't agree with all that sort of business. That's not my cup of tea. So basically, that saved me. I saved myself. And I've never looked back since. Never used class A drugs since that day. When I first accessed WDP, ironically, when I moved from Hackney to Ilford, um, it was for the wrong reasons, basically. I moved to Ilford and I wanted to score, I wanted to get some drugs. And um, I thought, what can I do? I don't know no one. I thought, let me find the nearest drug and alcohol service in Redbridge. So I found it and I, I thought there's going to be users in there. So I waited around, I bumped into someone. I said, I've just moved here, bang, bang. And then that's it. And that's how, the, how ironic I access them in the wrong way, obviously, WDP. So, and I used my initiative and I thought, hold on a minute. And when I needed help, I thought, look, I went up there to get drugs to, so I can go up there to access and in, like, engage with the service. So, yeah, I, I first when I came up here to get help, I had a key worker. Where he was um, a tough guy and um, I didn't like him at first. I thought this guy, he said, get out. He said, come back, he's, you're always late, you, you're always on, on drugs, get out and come back. Mm -hmm. I thought, this this guy, you know, I did anyway. Mm -hmm. I said, this guy, you can, you know, leave it up to the imagination what I said about him. Then I came back and um, basically he was tough with me. I told him, I said, look, don't go around the houses, don't be mounty pounding, just tell me how it is if I'm acting like a... A twat, then tell me uh, I'm a twat, simple as that. And he did, because uh, I told him to. And um, he got me on the straight and narrow, went into rehab. Uh, but two years later, I set up a, a mainstream football team. And Tony played for my team, he was left back for my team. So it was ironic how things turned around. I got into rehab, and then he started playing for my football team, only for the first six weeks. But it was a uh, it was a big step at that time, really, to be honest with you, to see that change in this short space of time. So that was the first experience I had with WDP. And um, it helped me out a lot, yeah. Got into rehab relatively quickly, although be it, I got kicked out. These things happened. But I wasn't meant to be there more than seven weeks because yeah. I didn't need it. And you've got your aftercare with us, haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, I bad counselling with WDP um, when I came out of... Um, detox for 12 weeks which helped me a lot immensely it helped me it did and um, one piece of advice I got was the work don't start in here it starts outside and I didn't think about that and it was good philosophy really because people think you go talk about things in the room anyone can talk about anything in any room but you know you have to actually do the work outside there's no point talking mm. talk is cheap you know and that's it so it was really effective really basically yeah What way has your life changed? What way has it changed? Yeah. Um, it's changed in so many ways, there's no definitive way or answer really. It's changed mm. for the better. Um, it's, but my behaviour's changed really, that's what's changed to be honest with you, because my behaviour's changing. Because obviously that's the foundations of it, you have to change your behaviour obviously before anything else changes. And um, But yeah, my behaviour's changed, my attitude's changed and um, I've got a different way of thinking. Um, rather than before, it was one dimensional before, but I've got a more open mind. I, um, I, I know people with different backgrounds like, uh, who I wouldn't have had time for before. Like, I'm more open minded about people. Um, I don't judge people, 
really as much as I did before mm -hmm. because I was very judgmental. I didn't, if I didn't like you, then I don't like you. But I didn't like them for the reason, wrong reasons, really. But now I'm more accepting. Mm -hmm. I'm more accepting of different people, and um, yeah, you know, I'm less angry. I don't get angry anymore because I haven't got time to be angry really because anger is just um, anger is good it depends on how you channel it I suppose but yeah I'm just more more relaxed really a bit more laid back rather than 200 miles per hour I would say 75 yeah well you know that's the way it is isn't it really you can't be flash and ignorant and cocky and arrogant because that I've tried that it didn't get me anywhere I just shut off a load of people like that people didn't want to know me because I was too too much but now um, I'm more relaxed, more approachable because the, what I do now, like I work with people and you know try and create stuff and that, and like uh, you can't, you, you have to have the personality to work with different people, like loads of different characters, and you have to adapt yourself to different scenarios and circumstances. So yeah, I've changed um, a lot, really, I suppose, in my approach and my outlook on life. Mm. Mm. I've got older. <laughs> and a bit more miserable, you don't like a bit more rigid, a bit more organised, just a little bit, mm. but yeah. So what things are you, kind of things are you doing now? Well, um, I do a lot of creative stuff. Um, I did do football before, I've done football coaching, run my own football team with a lot of different characters which I had to man manage, which was a big help, that was the start of it all in 2008. Um, but yeah, I do like a bit of stand-up comedy, um, um, I'm in the process of trying to set up a community project, um, East Creative Productions, in creative and performing arts, and I do a lot of work in the theatre, Carbon Citizen, and um, try and do some... Um, Working community, like members rep stuff and mentoring, so that's what I'm doing. And I have trained to be a support worker, but that was just for the experience of it. I never actually want to be a support worker, and it's put me off to be honest with you. But yeah, I learned a lot through that as well, and that helped me. Absolutely fantastic, it's been great. Um, counseling's great. Well, I had um, counseling um, in my first three months of recovery, which helped me a lot, and I'm going to carry on that counseling for my assurance and my sanity. But yeah, uh, second to none service, I'm glad I engaged it, and um, I've been treated um, with respect and, um, well, really good, yeah. And what would you recommend about WDP? I'd recommend anybody to go if you're struggling with any substances or or whatever, alcohol, whatever, it's all the same. Um, I, I would advise to engage WDP or a service to, because you can't do it on your own. Um, but you can try, but it's tried and tested and it, it doesn't work. It, personally, it didn't work for me. Um, so try and engage the service, get help because, you know, you, it's the best thing you can ever do, really. You know, it's the hardest thing you can do, but it's the most easiest thing you can do as well, really. So, if you can channel running around, getting drugs and all that, if you can do that, you can engage your service, because it, it is helpful. It's non-judgmental, and you'll be treated with respect. I did it, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. What advice would you give uh, to young people about alcohol and drugs? Well, young people, that's, that's, a, that's a key thing in the media, it's all in the media. Um, but young people, like, um, you know, it starts off with weed, cannabis, weed, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I started on cannabis and I said I would never do any other drugs and then it just was a down. So no matter how tough you think you are, you know, I would say to the youngsters, like the skunk as well, with mental health and schizophrenia and mental health problems and drug-induced psychosis, yeah. that, you know, try and, you know, young people need to be guided in, in the right way and, um, you know, just try and think about your future because you're young now, but you ain't always going to be young. Mm -hmm. I thought I would stay young forever and, um, 
it doesn't work like that, you know. Try and get help while you're young so you can have a better future, otherwise you, you could, you, your future is in um, your future is in um, in trouble, basically. You know, it's it going to be detrimental to you. If you don't get help, then your future is going to be very, um, not very good, basically. You only can do it for a certain amount of time. You know, you think it's good, you're young, you don't see sense, you know, but at the end of the day, you try and think about it logically, because you're not young forever, and the years creep up, and then soon you know it, you're 20, then you're 30, then you're 40, then if you haven't sorted your life out, you're not, everyone's, you know, too, too old to change, you can change at any age, but don't get to that age, 30, 40, when you probably be on the scrap heap after that, because no one will touch you with a barge pile, and that's reality. Saying, uh, and they say it in a lot of like theatre, you've only got one take, yeah. and you, you know you've only got one take on life. What's your take on life now? Basically, I, I, I don't. I, I have got personal regrets, but I don't. I have. I don't really think about the regrets really because regrets make the life in the future. And if, if I if I done the if I done if I received help ten years earlier when I needed it, but I did have a chance to change when I was young, but I see it, I bypassed it. And um, if I had a mentor when I was younger to teach me, you know, who's been there, to help, you know, try and help me along, and, you know, then, you know, it's good. You know, try and stop before it gets too much, you know. If I had a mentor, if I knew what I knew now, 10 years ago, then I'd probably... In five years' time, I would have achieved that five years earlier. So, you know, like you say, just take your chance mm -hmm. and uh, see if you've got an opportunity to change, then take it. If you don't and you get another one, take it because you, you know, you do make mistakes over and over again. But as long as you learn from them, if you don't, then you probably never will because you get set in your ways and then you'll, you're finished, <laughs> basically. Have this picture. Which one are you more drawn to? Um, to be yourself. Let me have a look. Yeah. This is the picture I'm talking about here. You see? Yeah, lovely jubbly. <laughs> this is me, skinny pink me, lovely <laughs> colour. Pink made the late, like, ladies wink or something. <laughs> yeah, I would like to be the one in the world. Um, that it draws because it's all inclusive, rather than this one off your head. Um, so yeah. I'd rather be in it than out of it because once you're out of it, you have to get back in it again, and it's too much hard work, believe you me. So, yeah, I would like this one, please. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. I think I, I basically, you know. With the experience I've got and what I've done and what I'm doing, you know, just try and access services. If you need help, get some help. You know, I know it's tough. I know you have to get up and you have to go out and you might be physically addicted to drugs or psychologically addicted to drugs and you think you haven't got time to go and access services. Just find that time. Even if it's half an hour or, or something, just engage, go up. You've got nothing to lose. So, you know, if you're going through the Maya, as they say, an addiction and whatever it is, just try and get some help because it's the best thing you can ever do because you can have a different life. I, I used to see people in treatment who used to come and do talks and, like I've said before, like, you had big burly geezers with scars down their face saying they're sitting in the park looking at flowers and all that. I thought, what are these guys talking about? What's all this about? I didn't understand the concept. But it's about sitting down taking it easy because when when you're on drugs you're rushing around 100 miles per hour you're not seeing nothing around you you know the sun's beating down on you but it's a hindrance you're sweating and you should be enjoying the sun you're 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 you've got blinkers on you know there's a park on the left there might be a river on the right you don't care about that you just go just take it easy you know and now i can sit back relax you know even if i'm on a train journey you know you can look at the environment around you it's nice and beautiful rather than getting to your destination to do drugs so 
you know, try and step it down, take it easy, active service, turn your life around, then you will see a different different environment and world around you. It's not rubbish, it's not nonsense, it might sound like it at the time, but when you realise, then it makes sense.